Hey, Slowpoke, have you seen my clothes? No, I haven't. Why? That's just great. I'm missing all of my clothes. They just disappeared. What am I gonna do? I have to record today. Well, at least you still have your apron. Wait, that's it. Slowpoke, you're a genius. You're welcome. Wait, what did I do? Welcome back to Cook, the show where I cook every dish from Food Wars. But normally I do it with more clothes on. But it's fitting that I'm wearing minimal clothing because today we are taking care of our first non-soma dish, and that is made by Ishii Senpai himself. Weird that the first non-soma dish is made by Ishiki, but it's fine. And in honor of Ishiki, we are going to be cooking in nothing but anger. But what exactly are we making? That would be the pepper grilled soup. So, without further ado, let's just jump right in. Alright, so we're going to start our dish by focusing on the cabbage puree. Now, I've already done a little bit of work on the cabbage. I cut up half a cabbage, and then uh, uh, 200 grams if you want to be precise, but it was half for me. And then I put two tablespoons of water in this microwaveable sick bowl, and I just hit it in the microwave. My man Ishiki's out here using a microwave at Totski. I can't believe it, but he's on the council of 10. So the recipe here, I'm giving the recipe just so that I make sure that I'm saying where I'm getting the recipe from. It is directly from the special supplement in the manga, so that's where I'm getting this recipe from. And it says to use a food processor, but I don't have a food processor, so we're going to use the handy dandy blender. Now we haven't broken up the blender on Oda Cook, but I call this, this is the mint machine. Now my grandmother was tasked with getting me a blender for my birthday because I asked for a blender and she had three options to pick from. She could pick from red, silver, or mint. And of course, she bought me the mint, as you can see. It's got such a cup so it sticks to the counter a lot, which is a good thing. So we're gonna pour our cabbage in. Now I hope that my blender can, uh, dang on the mess counter. I thought my blender can fit all this cabbage, but I guess I won't have to worry about it since I threw half of it into the sink. Also, that bowl was really hot. Also, I don't think you saw that because I'm not recording on my phone, so ha ha ha, you don't get to see how big of a mess I made. All right, let's throw our cabbage in. Yeah, I'm below the max fill line, so we're good. Get that hot bowl over there. All right, so what we're also gonna need is we're gonna need one tablespoon of butter, which I already have cut up here. Break into this. Okay. Two tablespoons of cream. Now, I got whipping cream because I figured if it meant heavy whipping cream, it would have said heavy cream. So we're just gonna use cream. Cream. All right. One. Now, I'm not like a huge cabbage guy, so this is gonna be an interesting dish to see if I like it. So there's our cream in. And then next thing we're gonna do is the recipe calls for granulated consomme. Now, I don't, I, I couldn't find granulated consomme. Nor do I know what really granulated consomme is. I imagine it's just like a soup stock that's like a powder. So we have this chicken powder that I found. Uh, I hope it works. I think the point of it is to just like season the dish. 
So, yeah, we're gonna hope that that's what it does. I'm uh, gonna throw in, it says half a teaspoon, yep, half a teaspoon of the granulated consomme, which this totally is granulated consomme. It, don't let anyone tell you that it's not granulated consomme, because that's what it is. I spilled cream everywhere from the tablespoon. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, we're gonna. Uh, oh, whoa. It like vacuumed in. Did you, you probably didn't hear that. I hope the mic picked that up. That's cool. Um, I think we're locked in. And then we're gonna hold that down. Achieved cabbage puree. It's a little solid, I will say so. I think I'm gonna give it a little bit more. I'm probably gonna skip that though, because that was loud. Um, anyway. Yeah, we're gonna give it a little bit more. Let our salmon, I'm gaslighting myself now. 
We're gonna let our fish cook for uh, 10 minutes and then when that's done, we're gonna add in our liquid and then the dish will be done. Again, it's gonna be a really quick one today. So see you when the fish is done. All right, it has been five minutes on each side. Our fish is looking really good. So now we're going to add in our liquid here. Careful not to pour it on top of the um, crispy skin because we want that to stay crispy. And so what we're going to do is we're going to let this reduce by half. We reduce a lot of things on this show. But however, unlike the last time we reduced something, this dish is like really easy. Probably because Japanese food focuses more on simple flavors and simple ingredients and, you know, mastering techniques. Ishii's probably, like, mastered this dish perfectly. You know, he has no doubts on his puree. He knows exactly how long to cook that fish. He's got it down pat. Me, this is the first time I'm making this, so I hope it turns out, honestly. We'll be back when the liquid is reduced. All right, we're gonna go ahead and call that reduced. I might have reduced it a little bit too much. But we removed from heat. We're going to season with some pepper here. Now, it says to season with Japanese pepper, but I couldn't find Japanese pepper. I mean, who can find Japanese pepper other than people who live in Japan? But, uh, we're going to season it with a bunch of pepper here, very liberally. And then we're going to move on to plating and final verdict. <laughs> for the recipe today because 
No one else has attempted to make this on the internet. Like, I'm the only one that's like documenting it and making a video out of it. So I had to like go from the practical recipe. So this is how they, you know, intend the dish to be made. But it's not awful. It's not bad. And honestly, it's kind of like fish and coleslaw, if we want to be real. Yeah, it's just bougie fish and coleslaw. So you got that looking forward to. So I'm gonna finish this up, I'm gonna eat the rest of the salmon, and then we're gonna talk about the chapter breakdown and give more of a final verdict, because I always have more to say about the food after I finish a whole plate of it. So chapter when we're finished. All right, now that I have actually eaten the dish in its entirety, I have a few more things to say about it. The dish is actually like pretty good. I mean, like it tasted good, but I think I might have figured out why it's so simple. The context of the dish is at a party. And you know, when you're at a party, there's a lot of different things. You know, Shun, he like smoked like jerky and other stuff. And then, you know, I think her name's Ryoko. She brought like the, the not wine, the rice juice, but they were all acting drunk, so. I don't really know what she put in that juice, but, uh, I, I don't know. But, uh, anyway, it was like a collection of, like, little snacks. And I think the point was for Ishiki to, like, cook a piece of fish and then serve it with a nice little accoutrement. And the accoutrement was the cabbage puree. So, if I don't think of it as, like, a meal and I think of it as, like, just a dish to, like, serve to a friend to have them like try it out, then I sort of understand it better. Or if you think of it as like a course in like a five course meal, you know, you get the pepper grilled sear with your cabbage puree. Now, I still think there is a little bit of something missing for it, but it just makes a little bit more sense to my head in that context. But I spoke a little bit about the chapter earlier, so let's fully get into that. So, like I said, Soma and everybody in the Polar Star dorm is having a nice little rager with the special rice juice that Ryoko made. And then, you know, we meet all the characters from Polar Star dorm. We've got Yuki, we've got Zenji, we've got Shun, we've got Ryoko, we've got the two guys whose names I can't remember. Best girl Megami's there. And of course, Ishiki's there. Now, speaking more about Ishiki specifically, when we first meet him in the anime, I didn't really like, I don't know if it was like his dub voice or the whole like nudity, but I just was like, this guy's kind of creepy. He's kind of weird. But later in the series, he's really cool. And I, and I gain more of an appreciation for him. This is also when we get introduced more to the idea of the Council of Ten, which Ishiki is of course the seventh member of. Now, the introduction of the Ten here and the continued rollout of the characters is a really important part of Food Wars, but we don't get that for like a while ahead. It sort of reminds me of One Piece with like, you know, you hear about the Shichibukai, but like you don't meet like half of them until like 600 chapters down the road. It's just one thing that Shonen Manga do that like I don't really get to experience because I don't really read Shonen Manga that much. Now, this isn't the last we're going to be talking about this party, because next time, we're going to be dealing with Soma's dish, the seer chazuke, which, of course, we will also be substituting with salmon, but I can't wait to do it next month, so make sure you guys are subscribed, make sure you get notifications, and leave a comment. I always appreciate getting comments, so I really appreciate you guys telling me what you think of Yoda Cooks what you think of the dishes, if you guys are cooking these at home, and also leave a likes, and yeah, you're welcome.